Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our discussion on common stocks and their valuation. There are a lot of cases where projecting the future dividends is not practical. It is either the company does not pay dividends yet or forecasting the dividends cannot be reasonably made. So it is important that we have an alternative to the dividend discount models. We have the corporate valuation model, also known as firm valuation model. This is a valuation technique which calculates the firm's free cash flows then finds their present values to determine the company's value. So let us use the following timeline to illustrate how this is going to work. So we have free cash flows to be generated by the firm for year one, year two, year three, until infinity, forever. What we are going to do will be to discount these cash flows back to year zero using the appropriate discount rate. Since we are going to discount cash flows generated by the firm, the appropriate discount rate would be the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC. Once we arrive at the firm value, this is basically the value of all of the company's assets, we are going to remove the portion funded by debt and preferred shares. Less debt and preferred share value, that would leave us with the value funded by equity, which we call the equity value. We are to divide this among the number of shares number of common stocks outstanding, we have the estimate of the stock's value. Again, we arrive at the firm's value by discounting back the free cash flows to the firm to year zero, reduced by the portion financed by debt and preferred shares. That would leave us with the equity value Divide this by the number of common shares outstanding, we have the stock's value. This is how we arrive at the value of the common stock. To illustrate, let us refer to the following case. Adam Development expects to generate 15 million pesos in free cash flows in the coming year. This is expected to grow at a constant rate of 4% every year forever. Adam Development has 100 million pesos in debt, but no preferred stocks. Its cost of capital is 10%. If Adam Development has 10 million shares outstanding, what is the stock's value? So, to arrive at the value of the common stock, we should start with the value of the firm. We can use the Gordon Growth Model, customized for the firm value, as shown in this formula. The firm value in year zero is equal to the free cash flows to the firm in year one divided by WAC minus the constant growth rate. We would have the value of the firm in year zero. This is equal to 15 million divided by 10% minus 4%. This would give us a firm value of 250 million pesos. So illustrating this visually, we have the following diagram. So the timeline from year zero to infinity. Free cash flows of 15 million will be generated one year from now. This will grow by 4% every year, 15.6 million in year two, 16.224 million in year three, 
and it will grow continuously by 4% every year forever. Let us take the present value of all of these cash flows back to year zero. And that is what was basically done by the formula of the firm value. We have 250 million. The firm value is 250 million. Let us deduct the amount funded by debt and or, or preferred stocks. That is 100 million. The equity value is now 150 million. Divide this by the number of shares outstanding, 10 million. The estimate of the stock value would be 15 pesos per share. So this is how you would arrive at the value of the stock using the corporate valuation model. Now, how do we arrive at the free cash flows to the firm? How is this calculated? Let us begin with earnings before interest and taxes. Take note, to arrive at the earnings before interest and taxes, we must deduct from sales revenue all expenses related to the operations of the company. That would include cash operating expenses, as well as non-cash operating expenses like depreciation and amortization expenses. That would lead you to earnings before interest and taxes. Once you have earnings before interest and taxes, which is EBIT, you can arrive at the free cash flows to the firm using the following formula. EBIT times 1 minus tax rate plus depreciation and amortization expense considering this is a non-cash expense and hence should be added back less any capital expenditure incurred in the year less any increase in networking capital as this will consume cash flows. To demonstrate how to calculate the free cash flows to the firm, let us refer to the following case. Assume that today is 31 December 2020 and that the following figures apply to Vermont shipping lines. Operating income, which is loosely equivalent to EBIT for 2021, is expected to be 700 million pesos. Depreciation expense for 2021 is projected to be 100 million pesos. The capital expenditure for 2021 is planned to be 100 million pesos. No change is expected in net operating working capital. The free cash flows is expected to grow at a constant rate of 2% per annum. The cost of common equity is 14%. The weighted average cost of capital is 9%. The market value of its debt is 3 billion pesos. 200 million shares of stock are outstanding. The effective income tax rate is 25%. So to arrive at the value of the stock, we should begin with the free cash flows to the firm in 2021. Vermont shipping lines, the free cash flows to the firm can be calculated using the following formula. EBIT is 700 million pesos times 1 minus the tax rate of 25%. Add back the non-cash expense of depreciation and amortization expense, 100 million. The DOC, the spending for capital or capital expenditure, 100 million pesos, less zero increase in networking capital. You would have a free cash flows to the firm of 525 million pesos. To arrive at the value of the firm, we're going to divide 
these free cash flows to the firm in the year to come by the WAC minus the constant growth rate. You have the value of the firm in year zero would be the free cash flows to the firm year one, 525 million, divided by the difference of 9% and 2%. The value of the firm is 7.5 billion pesos. Illustrating this visually, you have the following. Again, the value of the firm is 7.5 billion. To arrive at the equity value, we must deduct any debt or preferred share value which finances the firm. In our case, it's 3 billion. That would leave us an equity value of 4.5 billion. If there are 200 million shares outstanding, the value of one share is estimated to be 2250. The stock's value is estimated to be 22 pesos and 50 centavos. That's how you calculate the stock value using the corporate valuation model. As for the non constant cash flow phase of the business, the same principles can be applied in corporate valuation model. Let us refer to the following case. Assume that today is December 31, 2019, and that the following information applies to Nevada Rails. So you would have operating income for 2020, 2021, and 2022 given. The tax rate, the depreciation expense, deducted in arriving at EBIT, capital expenditures, increase in inventory and receivables, increase in payables. After year 2022, the cash flows are expected to grow annually by 4% constantly. The WAC of the firm is 12%. It has debt with a value of 200 million pesos and preferred stocks with a value of 50 million pesos. There are 50 million shares outstanding. To arrive at the value of one share, we have to calculate the free cash flows to the firm every year for the next three years. The free cash flows to the firm for 2020 can be calculated as follows. That would lead us to a free cash flow to the firm 2020 of 28 million pesos. For 2021, that would lead us to a free cash flow to the firm for 2021 of 42 million pesos. For 2022, That would lead us to a free cash flow to the firm 2022 of 41 million pesos. Once we are able to calculate the free cash flows to the firm in the non-constant growth phase of the business, we may now do the following projections in the timeline. Free cash flows of 28 million is expected to be generated a year from now, 42 million two years from now, 41 million three years from now, after which a constant growth will be expected moving forward. So year three onwards, we are going to experience a constant growth and hence we can calculate the value of the firm as of year three. Using the Gordon growth model, the value of the firm in year 3 is equal to free cash flows to the firm in year 3. Let it grow by one year. 
41 million times 1 plus 4 percent divided by the WAC of 12 percent less the constant growth rate of 4 percent. The value of the firm as of year 3 is expected to be 533 million pesos. Value of the firm as of year 3. To arrive at the value of the firm as of year 0, we have to take the present value of each free cash flow individually, bring them back to year 0, using the weighted average cost of capital as the discount rate. So the PV factor for 12% one year, 0.8929, Two years, 0.7972. Three years, 0.7118. Taking the present value of these cash flows, we have the following. This would lead us to the firm value of 467 million pesos. Once we have the firm value, 467 million pesos, deduct the portion financed by debt and preferred shares, a total of 250 million. That would leave us with an equity value of 217 million pesos. Divided by the number of shares outstanding, 50 million, the estimated stock's value is 4.34. Estimated tax value, 4 pesos and 34 centavos. That's how you would take the value of the shares using the corporate valuation model in a non-constant growth scenario. If you find this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.